So today I'm going to show you one of my favourite sourdough loaves to bake at home and I've called it the Old Faithful because it is a reliable recipe that produces an outstanding little loaf of sourdough without too much bother. Now this recipe makes an 800 gram dough. I'm using 325 grams of water which makes this a 78% hydration dough. Now it's starting to warm up a tad here at the moment and I'm hitting about oh, 28 degrees Celsius, that's 83 degrees Fahrenheit in my kitchen. So I'm actually reducing the amount of sourdough starter that I use throughout all of my recipes and that's just to stop things going too quickly and to give the dough plenty of time to ferment. So this is 45 grams of ripe starter which is 100% hydrated. And this is what happens when you forget to zero the scale. The brain cogs are struggling to turn, so I'm going to blame that on the heat. In goes 378 grams of strong white bread flour and 45 grams of whole wheat flour. Next up we've got 8 grams of sea salt going into the bowl. Now this will get a thorough stir to make sure that those two flours and the starter are really well distributed throughout the mix. And then it's time to get my hand involved and I'm going to bring everything together into a rough dough. Same as usual, nothing changes. Bring it all together and make sure we've got a really well combined dough. It doesn't need to be smooth and then it's going to sit covered at room temperature for about 20 minutes or so to give that flour time to hydrate. Now don't stress too much about an exact time. Anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes rest is going to be perfect and it's going to make that dough a lot easier to mix. So here we are mixing and I'm going to turn this over for about a minute to make sure that everything is well combined. Now if you're used to working with 100% strong white bread flour you will immediately feel the difference in this dough. It's softer, even with just 10% whole wheat flour. It makes for a dough that handles really nicely. So this is gonna sit out at room temperature, covered to bulk ferment. So at the beginning of the bulk fermentation period, the dough is gonna get three sets of stretching. I'm gonna do the first one 30 minutes after kneading. I'm gonna rest the dough for 30 minutes, do the second set, rest the dough for another 30 minutes and then do the final set. Now this resting period just allows that dough to relax in between. Now this is the first one and I'm doing a huge stretch or a lamination and someone asked me the other day why I do this and if it's better than stretching you know normally in the bowl I guess. I just really like doing this. I get a really good feel for the dough and that helps me if I'm trying to compare different flour ratios or hydration. So I guess I've just got used to it but stretching in a bowl or doing coil folds in a container works really well. So I thought I'd switch it up for the second session and I'm just gonna stretch the dough randomly here. I'm not using any specific technique, just gently pulling the dough out and then bringing it back together. You know, the dough doesn't know if it's in a bowl or out on the worktop. As long as it gets a nice stretch, it's gonna be perfectly happy. Now I couldn't resist flicking back to a big lamination on the bench for that final set of stretching. And this is a really nice soft dough. It's not tight, it kind of flows as you handle it. And at this point, I don't think the dough's gonna need any more stretching. So I'm gonna leave it in piece to relax and to finish its bulk fermenting at room temperature. Now the dough has increased in size by about 75 to 80%, I guess. And that's taken five and a half hours. Now no one, nobody apart from you is gonna know when your dough has finished bulk fermenting properly. There's just way too many variables. So I'd suggest calibrating your senses, observing what's happening with the dough every single time you bake. I am constantly asking myself, how does it feel? How does it smell? How does it move? You know, when you wiggle the container, you'll soon tune in and be able to identify easily when your dough has fermented correctly. Now because it's a bit warmer today and the dough feels a touch soft, I'm going to give this a very quick pre-shape. And look at that, it's a lovely puffy, soft but strong dough. And this is now going to sit for 15 minutes uncovered on my bench just to relax. Now we can shape and you see that plaster on my finger? That is a true indication, proper proof of how sharp the new bread knife is that Lampson kindly sent me out. And if I can keep all of my digits long enough I'll be following up on the blog in more detail about this awesome bread knife once I've played around with it just a little bit more.
Now I kept this room temperature proved to just one hour because I want to compensate for the increase in temperature and it's going to continue when it goes into the fridge and I don't want to run the risk of this overproofing. So this sourdough is going to bake on a stone that's been preheated in my oven to 220 degrees at Celsius, that's 430 degrees Fahrenheit. It's going to bake covered for the first 20 minutes and then I'll continue to bake it for another 25 minutes uncovered. Now you can see here just how much that dough continued to increase in size in the fridge during that 18 hour rest. And look at the way the cold dough settles down on the peel, that's a good indication of how soft this dough is. This is a lovely loaf, it smells cracking and I'm really chuffed with a sourdough that this recipe produces. And judging by the outside shape we can see that the proof in the basket was just about spot on. I love the crumb, but you know what's really weird about this? You can barely see any of that whole wheat in it. Now I'm not sure if that's because the flour I use is quite coarse, but you could distinctly see it in the dough, but it's blended right into the crumb. But what you can do is taste that whole wheat flour. It adds a warm, homely flavour to that bread and it gives the crust a deeper taste with a slightly softer texture. The crumb on this loaf is soft too. This makes an awesome sandwich. Now, I'm not sure if the recipe will go live on the blog at the same time as this video, but if it doesn't, I will make sure that all of the ingredients are listed in the video description until it does. So, that is my Old Faithful sourdough recipe. Let me know what you think of it, and if you give it a whirl, drop me a tag on Instagram. Now, if you didn't see the refurbished No Need sourdough recipe, then you can catch that by clicking on it here. A huge thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.